So let's have uh, a lesson on the session number five by Segreras. And uh, if you already have the sheet music, just follow along with the lesson, of course. Um, but uh, I do have an edition out, so just follow the link in the description if you want to pick that up. So this is an excellent little study. You know, a lot of Segreras pieces, um, they're, they're pretty good studies. Like some of them are quite didactic kind of studies. Other ones are just like really um, flavorful uh, works. This is a very dedicated study to melody in the bass or melody in the thumb, which is really great for me this week because I have some cuts and stuff from doing housework on my fingers. So melody in the thumb. So what you want to do in this piece first, of course, is just play that melody on its own. So that's the bass voice, all the stems down. And you can go through the whole piece working on the bass line just on its own. And then when you add in the upper accompaniment voice, you just have to be super soft. Just brush the strings with those fingers, right? Like, you should really just take a little bit of the intro. And see how lightly you can just brush those strings, because you don't want... Too, uh, it interferes with the legato bass line too much. So very soft on the fingers and just bring that thumb line out. And plenty of phrasing ideas here, you know, that sounds like it resolves to there. You can even do a little bit of vibrato. If you're not used to vibrato, you can check out the lesson I have on vibrato on the site, on the lesson page. Now, an interesting thing is that in the original, Segres does draw lines as to where the guide fingers are in this piece. And a guide finger, again, is just um, when you, you, you have a finger on a note and you change positions, you can keep your finger on that string and just move it down and using the string as a guide. Now, I'd be a little bit careful though in this piece because guide fingers are very, very useful, but they can also be quite noisy because if you leave too much pressure on your finger on the string, if you don't release it fully, um, you're, you're gonna get some string squeak, which is okay sometimes, um, but I don't think the intention is, is glissando here where, you know, we're doing lots of that. So, Yes, practice this piece with the guide fingers, but you'll, you might have noticed in a few occasions like that one, I actually do kind of jump my finger down. It's almost imperceptible though because like I'm keeping my finger so close to the string. Just to reduce that string squeak a little bit. But I would actually start by playing with, you know, a real solid guide finger and then ease off on it as much as possible like touching that string as um, lightly as possible or doing an actual jump but with the most minimal type of movement to reduce the string squeak you can treat it as an exercise but I would start with the guide finger to teach your fingers to stay in position and align themselves over the strings and to just get really solid with all the shifts and then as you're polishing the piece, you can try to reduce some of that string squeak. So let's just do a quick walkthrough. Uh, I don't think there's too much to say. I think just bring out that bass melody and make the accompaniment soft. Sometimes I forget to take off the accompaniment note. So bring that out, resolve, start again. So there. I 
I ease up, start again. Just to break the piece up a little bit. That one's a little quick. So you, I, I would use my third finger there. You're holding this D with your fourth finger. Make sure you're curving your third finger and just track it up that string so that you're accurate. Um, Sagreris does a guide finger here. He brings the third finger back down. I do use my first finger just because it's, it's a little bit closer and you have the open string afterwards so I felt like the guide finger is a little bit um, not that helpful there. You can make it pretty legato with the first finger. That's a bass note there, so that A, play with your thumb. I wish that there was a different way to finger that last part. I wish we could hold our second finger and reach out 3-4. But that's pretty risky. It's a little too much of a stretch in first position to do that. If you can reach it, great, go for it. But otherwise, just follow my fingering and jump into the new chord. When I finger a lot of this music on, on my computer, I have my little gitulele there, and everything is so easy. I can easily do stretches on, on my little gitulele, but went to the full-size guitar and it didn't work out. So just jump those fingers into the actual chord shape, which is what Sagreras does. Really nice little minor key here and bass, practice playing a bass melody. What a great little um, lesson from his book too. Um, that's all I really have to say about it, but I, I think it's a really good challenge. We work on our, our upper note melodies so much and we just don't get a, as much of a chance to have like a really clear bass melody that also utilizes some more of the guitar, at least at this kind of intermediate level. So I hope you enjoy it.